Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about global winds and the things that impact the direction that global winds flow. So first off, first thing that affects global winds is the Coriolis effect. Okay, the Coriolis effect is when air gets deflected or curved due to the rotation in the earth. Okay, in the southern hemisphere we see air get deflected counterclockwise, so instead of moving in a straight line, it will appear to move counterclockwise due to the Earth's rotation. And in the northern hemisphere, it appears to look, move clockwise. So, if we take a look at the globe, and if we only consider the Coriolis effect, okay, we're going to look at a couple different effects, and we'll look at them individually first before we put them together. So, first thing I want to do is put a line through the center of the Earth. This is my equator. Alright, so if I have the equator marked in here, okay. um, if I had air that was moving north across the globe in the northern hemisphere, that's going to get deflected clockwise, which means it would end up getting deflected to the side like this. In the southern hemisphere, we're going to see the opposite effect. So air that moves north would instead get deflected counterclockwise, so this direction. Okay. And same thing with air that is moving to the south. Now, the next thing to impact global winds are pressure belts. Okay. Essentially, air is always going to move from areas of high pressure to low pressure. So air wants to escape the high pressure and move where there is less pressure, where there's lower pressure. Now across the earth, there are different bands or different belts of high and low pressure at different points. Okay, these are due to temp temperature differences, temperature differences at different points of the earth. And it's not super important to know like how they get there, why they're there, but just recognize that these pressure belts exist because temperature is different in different places. Now, when we consider the pressure belts, the first thing we have to think about is where they are. So, I'm going to draw in the middle again about where my equator is. Okay, and where my equator is, I'm going to have a spot of low pressure. Okay. I'm also going to have some low pressure at the poles. Okay, so low pressure at the poles, come down to the south pole, do the same thing here. Okay. Now, those are my low pressure points. My high pressure points are in between those points. Okay, so I'm going to have a high pressure belt here, and then another high pressure belt over here. Okay. Now, because air likes to move from areas of high to low pressure, we're going to see air move away from these high pressure belts toward the low pressure. So we see air move from the high to the low in both directions. Okay, so air moving away from the high pressure to the low pressure. And then same thing with this high pressure belt in the southern hemisphere. Moves away from the high and toward the low. Now, last new, last thing that affects global winds are convection currents. Okay, we've talked about convection currents before in this class with um, ocean currents and how water cycles in the ocean, but we see the same thing happen in the air. Okay, they have the same definition as before. They're those circular currents of air due to changes in temperatures. Okay, so we get air moving in a circle away from cold or toward sources of cold away from heat, then away from sources of cold toward heat. Okay. On the Earth, they're due to temperature differences between the poles and the equator. 
Now, when I start looking at how um, convection currents affect wind, the first thing I need to do is add in the atmosphere. So let's see how terrible of a circle I can draw. Okay, so I'm going to add in the atmosphere above the earth. Ah, come back. There we go. I've drawn worse circles than this before. But uh, this is the atmosphere. So space would be out here and the atmosphere would be in there. Now when we look at these convection currents, they're going to start at the equator. So hot air at the equator is going to rise up and then it's going to cool off and travel toward the poles and sink back down at the poles and then head back to the equator like so. And we would see these currents kind of in all four, I guess you could say quadrants the earth. Okay, that air is going to be rising up in both directions at the equator and then traveling toward the poles and then back down to the equator. And I apologize, I just realized I never switched colors. I apologize if that was helping you before, but I am not turning back now. Okay, so we'd get these circular currents at all four different points in the Earth. So that is convection currents. Now, if we put it all together, first thing we need to do is mark up our Earth. So I'm going to start with the pressure belts. And I'm just going to label it LP because this is going to get a little messy. So LP standing for low pressure. If you don't like that acronym, you can write out low pressure in your notes. It does not matter. Okay. So we have our low pressure at the equator and near the poles. Okay. And now we're going to put in our high pressure in between those, which I'm going to call HP. Again, write whatever makes most sense to you. I'm just saving myself space here. So high pressure there. And then I again need to add in the atmosphere around the Earth. Okay, atmosphere around the Earth. All right, now I promise I'll switch colors this time. So first things first, air travels from high pressure to low pressure, but because we are putting together everything we've seen, we know that it won't travel in a straight line. It'll appear to get deflected due to the Coriolis effect. So when air travels from high pressure to low pressure, it's going to get deflected clockwise in the northern hemisphere okay, and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Okay. So that's the air that kind of travels around the globe. Now, if we think of convection currents, we still have convection currents in the upper atmosphere, but before I drew those convection currents stretching all the way from the equator to the poles. But when we account for the pressure belts in between there, we're going to see that the convection currents don't make it all the way to the poles that the pressure belts kind of cut them off. So air is still going to rise up where it's warmer, head toward where it's colder, but then it's going to sink down a lot sooner. And so then we'll get another mini convection current over here and another mini convection current over here. So we end up with many little convection currents across the globe instead of a handful of really, really big ones. Okay, so I know this is going to get a little tedious to draw, but bear with me. We're almost there. I'm already halfway through. Okay.
and we see the same effect on the other side of the globe. Okay, then again, getting all of these little tiny convection currents. Okay, and there you have it. That is all of the global wind patterns on the Earth. So please make sure your notes are complete, that your notes are ready to go for our next test or quiz, and please let me know if you have any questions.